For decades, Airbus and Boeing have ruled the skies in a near-total duopoly. But that dominance is starting to crack, because China's Comac is quietly rewriting the rules. This isn't about building the world's best jet, it's about a strategy designed to outsmart the entire aviation industry. This is the silent rise of the C919, China's narrowbody challenger. And it's not a future dream. Right now, multiple C919s are already in the skies over China, slowly chipping away at Boeing's and Airbus's grip on the market. But to understand how we got here, we need to rewind back to 2008. It's May 2008 in Shanghai, and the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, COMAC, is born. Its mission was simple but ambitious – create a domestic alternative to Boeing and Airbus. But here's where things diverge. Unlike private companies, COMAC doesn't face quarterly earnings calls or shareholder demands. Instead, as a state-backed manufacturer, it can prioritize long-term goals like market dominance and technological sovereignty without the pressure of immediate profitability. Boeing and Airbus, of course, have also benefited from government support through tax breaks and favorable loans. But at the end of the day, they still operate as commercial enterprises. COMAC doesn't, and that changes everything. Other challenges exist. Brazil's Embraer, for example, has carved out a global presence in regional jets, and it could grow into larger markets. Yet, Embraer still plays by traditional market rules, unlike Comac's state-driven model. And the timing for Comac, it couldn't be better. China's aviation market is exploding. Boeing projects the country will need around 9,000 new single-aisle aircraft by 2044. Comac's strategy, it's clear – dominate this home market first, and then use that foundation to expand onto the global stage. We've seen this exact strategy succeed before – in China's car industry. But hold that thought, because we'll come back to it. Now, Comac's journey, it didn't start with the C919. Their first aircraft, the ARJ21, or now named the C909 Regional Jet, it entered service in 2016 after years of delays, but it marked China's first serious step into commercial aircraft manufacturing. The C919 is COMAC's next leap forward, a single-aisle narrowbody designed to take on the Airbus A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX. Development began in the late 2000s, shortly after COMAC was founded, with its first flight in 2017, and commercial service entry with China Eastern Airlines in May 2023. So far, COMAC has secured more than a thousand potential orders, almost all from Chinese state-owned airlines and leasing companies. Production is ramping up slowly, with around 30 deliveries targeted for 2025, 50 annually soon after, and a longer-term goal of 150 per year by 2027. By comparison, Boeing and Airbus aim for 500 to 600 A320neo and 737 MAX deliveries annually though real numbers often fall short due to supply chain and production challenges. One of the C919's biggest advantages? Price. The Comac C919 has a list price of around $99 to $108 million per jet, closely aligned with the Airbus A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX, which range from $99.7 to $136 million. However, with discounts common in aviation and COMAC's aggressive pricing strategy, bolstered by potential Chinese government-backed financing, the C919 is likely to be cheaper for both domestic and international carriers, especially budget airlines in emerging markets. The pricing power gives COMAC leverage in negotiations, but to really compete, they need more than just a cheaper sticker. They need an aircraft family that fits multiple market needs just like Airbus and Boeing have done for decades. And, well, that's exactly the approach COMAC is taking with the C919. In many ways, it mirrors Western manufacturers, building not just one jet, but an entire family of variants designed for different missions. The backbone is in the C919-100. Within this, there are two versions – the standard, STD, and the extended range, ER. The C919-100 STD is the workhorse, 
With seating for 158 to 192 passengers and a range of about 2200 nautical miles, it's perfectly suited for China's dense domestic network. Powered by two CFM Leap 1C engines, it's the most popular variant, with major orders from airlines like China Eastern, China Southern, and Sapana Airlines, an HNA subsidiary. The C919-100ER extends the reach. It carries all the same 158 to 192 passengers, but thanks to a higher maximum takeoff weight and structural optimizations, stretches to around 3,000 nautical miles. Air China has ordered over 100 units, making it a key player for longer routes. But Comac isn't stopping there. Two more versions are in development. The C919-600, a shortened model, is designed for high-altitude airports, seating around 130 to 160 passengers, with a range of about 1,620 nautical miles. It's purpose-built for challenging airports like Daosheng Yading at 14,472 feet, the highest commercial airport in the world. Today, only specially modified Airbus A319s can handle it. At the other end, the C919-800 is a stretched variant, expected to seat 190 to 240 passengers, with a projected entry into service around 2030 and a range of about 2,430 nautical miles. It'll directly compete with Airbus's A321neo and Boeing 737 MAX 10. Comac's plan is clearly ambitious, but timing changed everything. Because, just as the C919 program was advancing, Boeing was hit with the worst crisis in its history. The 737 MAX crisis cracked open a door that had been closed for decades. Two crashes in 2018 and 2019 killed 346 people and led to a worldwide grounding of the fleet. For Comac, this was a rare opening. China was one of the first countries to ground the MAX and one of the last to approve its return. That decision, it wasn't just about safety. It showed how Chinese aviation authorities could use regulation as a powerful political tool, supporting their own products while putting pressure on foreign manufacturers. The MAX crisis gave Comac momentum at home, but the real test is abroad, where the C919 must prove itself on the global stage. So, let's talk about Comac's international strategy. Comac, they're not just selling planes, it's selling packages. Through China's Belt and Road projects, aircraft deals are often bundled with airport construction, financing, and even airline development. For many developing countries, that's a package Airbus and Boeing struggle to match. The focus is selective, short to medium routes, developing markets, and airlines that prioritize cost over cutting-edge efficiency. In other words, the niche is where Comac can realistically win, and it's already paying off. In 2023, Gallup Air of Brunei ordered 15 C919s. Soon after, Lao Airlines added two more, marking the jet's first true export. Talks are underway with Garuda Indonesia, and further north, Russia could become a major buyer once the aircraft is fully localized. With sanctions cutting off Boeing and Airbus, a Chinese-built jet looks increasingly attractive, especially under growing BRICS ties. And Comac doesn't even need global dominance to succeed. It has something far more valuable, the Chinese domestic market. Foreign manufacturers face rising regulatory and political hurdles there, while Comac, they have the home field advantage. By 2040, domestic demand alone could support hundreds of C919 deliveries every single year. That base gives Comac a strong foundation to expand abroad. It's a familiar playbook. Look at BYD in electric vehicles. Dominate the Chinese market first with state backing, then scale globally through cost advantages and supply chain localization. By April 2015, BYD had already outsold Tesla in Europe, and by June, nearly tripled Tesla's global sales. Comac appears to be following the same pattern in aviation. But here's the catch. Certification. Right now, the C919 basically only carries Chinese approval. To fly in major markets, it needs validation from Europe's EASA and America's FAA. Both processes are slow, political, and ultimately uncertain. EASA has hinted it could take years, while FAA approval looks even less likely under today's geopolitical climate. Until that changes, exports will be limited to China and countries willing to accept Chinese standards, restricting both sales and route options. 
Western rivals, they aren't standing still either. Boeing is ramping up financing through regional banks and expanding maintenance packages. Airbus is countering with aggressive leasing deals, supplier partnerships, and its Tianyin final assembly and delivery center. Western governments, too, are increasingly treating aircraft sales as diplomatic bargaining chips rather than simple business deals. The challenges are clear. Certification delays, political headwinds, lingering technology gaps, and the need to prove long-term reliability and support at scale. But with state resources, a protected home market, and time on its side, Comac has the patience and the ambition to chip away at these obstacles, just as other Chinese industries have done before. And while those hurdles make widespread Western adoption unlikely in the near term, curiosity has started to surface. In March 2025, Ryanair's outspoken CEO, Michael O'Leary, said he'd consider the C919 if it came in at 20-30% cheaper than Airbus or Boeing rivals. We actually broke this down in an entire video about Ryanair's potential move. But soon after, O'Leary walked the comment back, clarifying Ryanair wasn't actively pursuing Chinese jets. In Washington, the idea drew swift pushback. U.S. lawmakers warned against such purchases, citing security and geopolitical risks. So far, the result is clear – no Western orders. Interest remains limited to non-Western airlines, and until the C919 clears certification outside China, that's unlikely to change. And that raises another challenge. Because while Comac is pushing hard for global credibility, the C919 itself relies heavily on Western suppliers. It uses CFM Leap 1C engines, Honeywell flight controls, and Collins Aerospace cabin systems. But China is working hard to replace them. The CJ1000A engine, built by the Aero Engine Corporation of China, is in testing and could enter service in the late 2020s. Domestic firms are also developing their own flight management systems, landing gear, and auxiliary power units. This localization serves multiple goals – cut costs, secure the supply chain, boost China's industrial base, and reduce dependence on foreign tech. Every Western component swapped for a Chinese one increases the jet's appeal in markets where Western parts may be restricted. The timeline for full independence it isn't clear, but Comac is investing across all major systems to make it a reality. But localization, that's only part of the story. The real test is how the C919 performs in the skies. Since May 2023, China Eastern has flown it on routes like Shanghai Beijing, Shanghai Chengdu, and Shanghai Shenzhen. Passenger reviews are upbeat, quieter cabins, bigger windows, a more modern feel. Dispatch reliability has already topped 98%. China Eastern says costs are competitive with its A320 fleet, though still slightly higher than its most efficient aircraft. Still, the airline is adding more C919s and trialing new routes. Early results show the jet can compete, but proving long-term reliability and efficiency will decide whether it can truly stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Airbus and Boeing. And Comac isn't stopping there. Beyond the C919, Comac is already looking ahead. The C929, originally a joint project with Russia under the CR929 name, was designed to compete with the Boeing 787 and Airbus A330neo. After Russia withdrew in 2023 due to sanctions following its invasion of Ukraine, China chose to continue development independently. Targeting service entry around 2030-2035, to 2035, the C929 is expected to carry roughly 280 passengers over 6,480 nautical miles, pushing Comac into the long-haul market. Next comes the C939. Comac's conceptual move into the large wide-body space to rival the Boeing 777X and Airbus A350-1000. Still, in its early stages, it's unlikely to enter service before the 2040s. And then there's the C949. Outlined in a March 2025 academic paper, this supersonic concept envisions an aircraft flying at Mach 1.6 with an 11,000 km range, about 50% further than Concorde's. It would seat 28 to 48 passengers in an all-business class layout. A potential entry around 2049 is extremely speculative, but it highlights Comac's ambition to position China for the next generation of air travel.
Comac's rise marks the first serious challenge to Western aviation dominance since the Soviet era. But unlike earlier rivals, Comac isn't just building planes for a closed market, it's working to insert itself into the global aviation ecosystem while pushing for Chinese technological independence. That shift has ripple effects across the industry. Aircraft sales now intersect with geopolitics. Maintenance networks and pilot training may need to adapt to mixed fleets of Western and Chinese aircraft. Even certification standards could splinter, forcing aircrafts to navigate multiple systems. The real test is whether Comac can turn ambition into staying power. If it succeeds, it could reshape how airlines buy planes, how governments regulate them, and how future technologies are developed and shared. If it fails, the C919 may remain a largely domestic story. Either way, the global aviation market is entering a more competitive, more complex era, and Comac is right at the center of it. Hey, before you go, the YouTube algorithm thinks you're going to like this video next, so why not check it out?